In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Invitations. Invitations are very powerful and they're very important. And we can see the power and importance of invitations, good ones, by first looking at a few bad ones. We've all received lukewarm invitations, right? Invites given to you a few days before an event that was planned for months, or invites which didn't even directly come from the person, but from someone else. God forbid you may have even gotten an invitation with some hostility simmering below the surface. The Irish playwright George Bernard Shaw extended a famous invitation like this to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill, which sort of reflected their strained relationship and that between their peoples. Shaw wrote to Churchill, I'm enclosing two tickets to the first night of my new play. Bring a friend, if you have one. <laughs> and Churchill wrote back, I can't possibly attend the first night. We'll attend the second if there is one. <laughs> and so invitations, this is apparently true, this exchange. Invitations are meant to be direct and from the heart, and so we definitely notice when they aren't. And if we want to find the very best invitations, we should, of course, seek them in our scriptures with our Lord. We could choose many, but one of Jesus' most powerful invitations is actually framed on the back wall of our church above Christ. Come to me, all you who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Notice a couple of things about this powerful invitation. It is direct. Jesus says, come to me. He doesn't say, come to one of my prophets or even one of my apostles. And he doesn't say, for sure, come register here. Instead, the eternal Son of God invites us to come to me. And second, his invitation has no preconditions or rules or judgments. So many people think that our church, the Bible, the priest, Jesus himself, are all about rules and regulations, when in reality, they are invitations from God to us. So let's put aside the rules, the regulations, the judgments of others and yourself, and just come to me in worship, in scripture, in prayer. And come as you are, because God knows who you are. And Jesus' invitations are many, and they're good. But the real question today is how do we respond? In the parable from today's gospel reading, Jesus powerfully summarizes all of God's invitations and mankind's responses in just one story. You know it. A king who is God, prepares a banquet, and he's invited many people to come. But unfortunately, when the day comes, most of those invited find bad excuses of why they can't come. I have to work. I already have an engagement. There were 1,000 motorcycles in my way coming to church. I don't know if anyone ran into that this morning. Darwin did. Darwin knows what I'm talking about. So the king invites everyone and anyone to fill his banquet because those invited don't come. Well, we exactly continue God's great banquet in this church, especially on Sundays. This is a meal with God that we just partake, which is pretty much unlike any party that anyone throws. We invite everyone, every single week, forever, until the coming of our Lord. There's no price of admission. There's no guest list. There's no test scores. There's no income requirements. And there's really no dress code. We Armenians always dress nicely. Good job. There's almost no way you can get kicked out of this banquet, even if you don't follow the rules. You can come once a year, and you'll still be welcomed 
although somewhat frostily perhaps. But as we well know, not everyone comes who is invited. But this is no reason for judgment or writing people off. This should just be more motivation for us all. Me first. Because the only reason people don't come to worship, don't read the scriptures, or don't pay much heed to their faith is because they simply don't know who is inviting them to the banquet. Almighty God, who made all of creation and breathed special life into each of us, sent his Son to offer personal invitation after personal invitation to know and to follow him. Come to me, all who are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. What does God do when his invitations are routinely ignored? Does he ever stop giving his best self? Never, and neither shall we. So here at St. Hogwarts, together we keep offering invitations for everyone to learn about our Lord, to worship, to dine with him on Sunday. And whether people come or not, it's in their hands, and it's only up to us to keep extending our invitations to anyone and everyone who is ready to come, even, even if they are not on the A list. That might be the Armenian list. It might be the whatever A list. But whoever walks in this door might be from God and might respond to our invitation with the King. And so today my prayer for us is twofold. First, let's be receptive this Advent season to respond to God's personal invitations, which we all have in our unique ways to come to know and worship Him better. If you're eight, if you're 80, it doesn't matter. If you're a priest, it doesn't matter. We have invitations to know Him better. And let's never mistake these invitations for rules and regulations. They are instead opportunities for abundant life. And second, let's keep the door of our church, our hearts, wide open in inviting others. And let's share in big and small ways with anyone who will listen the honor of encountering God and growing together in this St. Hoggle Fellowship. Let us share how unworthy as we are, we respond to this standing invitation to dine with our King, whose kingdom is not of this world, but whose banquet begins here and now and carries on now and always and unto the ages of ages. Amen.